never seen anybody play in a competitive Fortnite match with a smile on his face like this kid right now. Hey, good to see him smiling. You know, Benji, loosen up, buddy. Don't cry. It's happy. That's yeah, awesome. That's so, so happy. So happy. The game with Nani. You're going to love it, but your global champions are here. There's no way anyone beats him. Me. $225,000, a life-changing amount of money. The victory royale goes to the veteran song. A 1.8 million? I'm, I'm fine with second place. Tom um, actually came up to me and he was like, dude, I think you got third place. And I was like, no way. Well, 1.2 million for third. Oh, no, oh, me, oh, me. Hey, oh my god, they chose him 100. Playing a tournament for hours is, yeah, it's really, it's just tough. Fucking taco time! I'm so bad, man! Oh! Fuck! I shit on that kid so hard, man! Stupid fucking game! Oh my fucking god! You fucking stupid fucking dev- Should you go pro in Fortnite? No. Unless you think you can. See, Fortnite is a global phenomenon, and to some, it's a path to fame and fortune. Let's be real, any competitive Fortnite player has thought to themselves at one point in time that they might be able to go pro. I'm gonna go pro. But what does it really take to be considered one of the greats, and is it really all what it's made out to be? Fortnite competitive has only grown more over the years, and with the player base growing, skill has inevitably increased as well. This makes being a new player to the game very overwhelming because everyone past a certain rank is already a certain skill level. However, regardless of how much the skill increases, there are more ways to practice than ever before to try to catch up to the current skill level. This includes box fight maps, 1v1s, aim training, realistics, and any other type of map that may help you increase your skill. And on March 29th, 2022, Fortnite released zero build to the game for the first time which unlocked a whole new competitive player base to the game for those who prefer not to build and zero build is definitely here to stay at this point although zero build does not have its own fncs it still gets dedicated tournaments by epic throughout each season Now let's talk about the grind. Pro players practice relentlessly to get to the point that they are now. You will see pros playing ranked, daily scrims, box fights, and 1v1s all day long, especially when it's around tourney season. Again, this means hours and hours and hours of practice every single day. When I first tried to go pro, the advice given to me was to free build until my hands bleed. Maybe not that literal, but you get the point. The pressure to consistently perform at the highest level, players will do anything they can to give them the extra edge in game. And not all of this practice is in game either. A lot of pros do everything they can outside of the game to make sure they have the best ability to perform. This could be anything from ice baths to eating healthy to working out and anything else that helps them stay disciplined so that their mental can stay strong when competing. But that's not all. If you're a popular pro player, unless you're placing number one every single tournament, then Fortnite competitive is not going to be enough to financially sustain you in your career. You have to be making content. You have to be streaming, you have to be making YouTube videos, YouTube shorts, TikToks, Instagram reels, everything. You need to be interacting with people on Twitter, engaging in other people's streams, networking with other players, doing everything you can to get your name out there so maybe an organization can pick you up and potentially pay you there. It doesn't just stop at playing the game. And with those videos, especially early on if you're starting out, you have to write everything yourself, record everything yourself, edit everything yourself every single day to maximize your chance of being one of the most well-known competitive players out there. And for every insane clutch moment that you'll see a pro make, there are hundreds of heartbreaking losses that have come before and will come after. Because competing on the biggest stage requires the biggest sacrifices. And again, with all that pressure to succeed, you will burn out. Trying to be the best you can every day, let alone in game, could potentially stress you out from wanting to play or work at all. Even the biggest pros to this day have had to take breaks from the game to readjust their mental. Some pros even left completely and moved on to other games. 
games. Maintaining a healthy work-life balance isn't easy, and with all the anxiety to perform every single day, it's no question how some pros can feel like it's all a little too much. In Fortnite, weapon changes, map updates, and new strats could set back weeks of practice and undoubtedly leave you stressed to adapt to the new meta. And on top of all that, unless you are a pro who is already making thousands to millions of dollars, the reality is that you're either in school or you're working a normal job. Without a doubt, school and work come first. Some players have made rash decisions like dropping out of high school just to compete in this video game. While I do admire the dedication to the game, I wouldn't suggest potentially screwing up your future just to compete. Not to say that you can't do both, but just make sure you have your responsibilities intact. So if you want to go pro, by all means, give it a shot. But just know how much effort you really have to put into this shit. So just stay humble and show love to your fellow players and creators. And if you have a dream, you better hold on to that motherfucker with everything you goddamn got. Because at the end of the day, it's all about the game.